like walking around. It just uh, relieves my anxiety. <laughs> you think after 43 years I, I wouldn't have anxiety anymore? Well, forget it. I still do. Anyway, I, I want to talk to you about uh, my Aunt Esther. Okay, uh, she's gone now. But uh, she was, wasn't really my aunt, she was my mom's double cousin. Brothers married sisters, and so every family gathering, uh, Esther was there. And uh, she was one of those uh, caustic people, okay? You probably know somebody like that. And uh, she was one, a person who saw your faults more clearly than you did, and she was all but too happy to point those out to you. And uh, none of the kids, none of uh, the nieces and nephews, none of us liked Esther. Because she was always being critical. She was never married either. And uh, she just said so many negative things. She got married though when she was 70 years old. And she had 20 years of marriage. And then after her husband died, uh, it was my mom's uh, task to look after her. And uh, wherever she took her to doctor's appointments or wherever, she always had a critical word to share with my mom. She never said thank you. She never paid for parking. And my, my mom concluded, like all of us did, that she didn't really like my mom. When I flew home to do my, uh, my aunt's uh, funeral uh, several years ago, she lived to be 102. And, uh, we were uh, gathering in the funeral, or actually at the nursing home where she had been residing, and I uh, did the service. And after the service, we were uh, greeting people, and this uh, one lady who uh, was a good friend of hers uh, came up to my mom and I, and he, she said, you're Ginny, aren't you? And she said, yes, I am. She said, Esther spoke so highly of you. She loved you so much. And my mom's drop, mouth dropped open. She looked at me, and we shrugged, and we wondered what had happened, right? What had happened that whole life, 102 years? This drew me to do a little bit of uh, exploration, and I started to ask people about Esther and about her life. She was an only child, and she had two parents who were very negative and critical. When I discovered this, I realized that she could not be anybody else than this person that she was. It changed my understanding of Esther. Unfortunately, she was already gone. But it speaks volumes to me about how we interact with family members and with people who are difficult. We all know difficult people. But the thing is, difficult people don't usually know that they are difficult. That's the catch, okay? If somebody would have come up to Esther and said, you're very difficult, you're very hard to deal with. Nobody in my family ever had the guts to do that or to say that. But she would have been shocked and she would have been surprised. In the second reading today, we had a, a very uh, long uh, reading about the tongue and about all the things the tongue can do and about people who can use their tongue very sharply with others. We all know people like that. Often in family disputes, it comes from somebody saying something very hurtful. The thing is though, that person often didn't realize that they were saying things hurtfully, and they didn't realize where that other people took them in a hurtful way. What do we do with people like that? We try to understand. We try to understand where that pain is coming from. People who are very negative and speak caustically to other people often came from childhoods where one or both parents or maybe even siblings spoke to them in that way. And if a person's heart has never been healed from their childhoods, those words flow out in the same way, unbeknownst to them. I remember uh, uh, saying, uh, I believe Carol and I were pretty good parents, but I think all of us think that, don't we? <laughs> 
But uh, one day, uh, we, we hardly ever were angry with our kids or yelled at our kids, never spanked our kids. But one day, uh, Scott pushed my button and I said something to him in a very harsh voice. And then I stepped back and I thought, that's my dad's voice. That's my dad's voice that I'm using with him. And for how many generations has this happened in some families? And it often goes back many generations. It's our job as Christians to try to understand why people are the way they are. We often fall into the realm of everybody else and we quickly judge them, we write them off, and try to push them out of our lives. We are called to live a deeper life. And that means trying to understand why a person is the way they are, why they say the things that they are, and look past, look past the hurtful and harsh words and try to understand why they are the way they are and say the things they do. But there's a stronger message for us today. And that comes from uh, that uh, lady who came up to my mom at the end of the funeral and said, Esther spoke so highly of you and she loved you very much. We don't do enough of that, do we? We don't do enough of that affirming in our lives. When people come in to see me and they're struggling with depression and anxiety, I often ask them, where on the scale of one to 10 is your self-esteem? And it's usually below a five, okay? Two, three, four. And I say, say the words, I'm awesome and amazing. You've heard me say this, okay? I'm awesome and amazing, say it 10 times. And usually at number two, people are starting to weep and cry, or people just stop and say, I can't say the words, why not? Because I don't believe the words. I don't ask you to believe the words. I ask you to speak the words. But when people can't say the words, I'm awesome and amazing, if they cannot say, I love myself, that is a sign that something has happened in their childhood and they need to heal from this pain in their hearts. We who are Christians, we who have a higher self-esteem, and we should, it's our obligation to build up, build up the body of Christ, to build up our families. We need to ask ourselves, are we more prone to say critical words to our children and to our family word, to our family members, to our spouses? What is the old adage? You're supposed to say 10 positive things about your children before you say one negative thing? How many of you had parents who did that? Not me. I didn't. My parents were awesome, but the, the critical words came much more easily than the building up, the affirmations. Let's make that a part of our lives. Affirming one another, saying the kind things, and if you can't say it to their face, text them or send an email or send them a card. You don't want to wait 102 years before somebody really thought you were awesome and amazing and they loved you so much, right? 